What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny Saw in Review. That's right. We are ranking, reviewing, and recapping every single Saw movie. Of course, I am Tim Geddes, and I am joined by my brother from another mother, Alfredo Diaz. Oh, Saw 6. It just keeps going. It does just keep going, baby. The sixth iteration of this franchise, this storied franchise. Uh, joining us as well, it's Christmas in October for the very first time. I'm saying that this year, Joey Noel. Uh, do you know that if you flip the Saw X up logo upside down, it looks like Xmas? No. It does. <laughs> is Joey the killer? <laughs> that. <laughs> like, that's some killer Do shit whatever right you want to do with that information. That's crazy <laughs> shit, Joey. <laughs> of course, that voice is the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Did you know, Tim, that at this at this point in the series, we actually have more pages on the on in, in the book than the Bible? Dang. Yeah. Wow. More pages in, in, the in the book. In, in, in ter- what book? Script, like the scripts of these movies. Oh. If you add all the pages up, it's more than the Bible. Wow. King James. Uh, there we go. Including Excellent. Leviticus. Yeah. <laughs> you were right. <laughs> <laughs> I flipped the Saw X poster for my Christmas card. It says, that's I feel like fair. that's what I need to do. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> yeah, that is. That's really good. And rounding out the group, we have the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Tim, did you know that we're calling it Socks? Mm. Mm, good. Excellent. Excellent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Speaking of socks, actually, um, we are going to change our plans just a little bit. Uh, so Saw 10 is in theaters now. I'm a little worried it's not going to be in theaters by the time we would need it to be uh, to do all of the, the uh, entries in this franchise. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do in Saw 6 today. Next week, we're going to do Saw 7, which is the final chapter of the original series. Then we're going to go into 10. Uh, and then we'll get back to Jigsaw and Spiral after that. I have it on good authority uh, for one of my friends, Matt Rohrbeck, who saw the movie already. And he's like, don't worry. You guys will be able to, to do it. with." The, and Jigsaw and Spiral can come later and it won't get in the way of stuff. So we're going to be good there. Uh, so that's just a reminder for everybody. It is in theaters if you wanted to watch it now. So you'll be able to uh, watch our interview in a couple weeks for that. Very exciting stuff. Uh, today. We're brought to you by Shady Rays, Rocket Money, and DoorDash, but we'll tell you about that later because I got to get into the rigmarole first. Of course, this Wait, is— Hold on, Tim. Tim, I got to mute my mic because there's about 17 fighter jets flying above me. One second. It is also Fleet Week in San Francisco, <laughs> so every once in a while, a lot of planes just fly by and do cool six I stunts. Swear I swear <laughs> every time I think Godzilla's invading somewhere. Oh, Godzilla. He's on my shirt right now. And the jets are on their way to go fight him. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> is that the Rangers on Godzilla? It is. Yes. When I bought the shirt, Alfredo thought it was just Power Rangers. Didn't realize Godzilla was involved, <laughs> but he's there too, you know. Uh, but anyways, this is in review. Where each and every week we get together to rank, review, and recap different movie franchises. If there is a franchise out there that you love or hate, chances are we've talked about it. You can get it on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com as a video. But if you want the audio version, search your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny in Review. We will be right there for you. If you wanted to go above end. Beyond, though, patreon.com slash kind of funny is where you want to go. Just like our Patreon producers, James Hastings, Jedi Master Deadpool, Casey Andrew, and Nathan Lamoth have all done. Uh, because of their support, they get the show ad free. They get to watch live as we record it. They get a whole bunch of bonus content, and they get to hear their names come out of this mouth. You could join that group, patreon.com slash kind of funny. Join them. Today we're talking about Saw 6 with a runtime of a sweet, sweet one hour and 30 minutes on the dots. you love it. You'll love the respect. Uh, it was released on October 23rd, 2009, keeping with that final week. If it's Halloween, it must be Saw. Uh, a week before filming began, the director was informed that the film would be post-converted to 3D. He lost his shit. And he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> do not fucking do that. That is a bad idea. Uh, so they ended up dropping it, and uh, they decided to resurrect that for next week's movie that we're going to talk about, Smart. which is Saw 3D, Perfect. the final oh. chapter. Uh, that he also directed, he being Kevin Grutert, uh, who was the editor on the Saw series for the first five films, then graduated, uh, as well as Jigsaw, the eighth film. He then graduated to being the director of Saw mm-hmm. 6, and then he did Saw 3D, and then he also did, did Saw 10. Wow. What a, I mean, you, you got to assume they pulled him into the office and they're like, hey, uh, 
guess what? We got to do something to the movie. And he's like, ah, oh, look, I've been in Hollywood forever. What are you going to do? You're going to cut this part. You're going to add this. Or, no, we're going to make it 3D. <laughs> like, oh, I'm what? Not to play a game. Some people live their lives in two dimensions. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this dude uh, didn't like that. So, but he did come back for, for 3D and he did that and then uh, for 10. So interesting stuff. Been with the franchise a long time. Music once again done by Charlie Clouser. This one had a budget of $11 million. Uh, which is uh, very much in line with uh, the rest of them. Uh, so far, number one was one million, two was four million, and then all the rest of them were like between ten and eleven. So pretty close. But the box office, though, pretty dramatic drop. Uh, the last couple of entries have been ranging between one hundred and twenty to one hundred and sixty million. This one came in at sixty nine point eight yeah. million, which, oh, while nice, nice uh, <laughs> is the the second oh, yeah. lowest in the franchise uh, overall. Uh, behind Spiral, uh, but Spiral was in a very, very, very pandemic moment. Uh, it was one of the first movies to kind of come back, like that was exclusively in theaters uh, as that was all happening. So it was only on Quibi. A lot. Yeah, <laughs> you have to watch Quibi to get <laughs> Chris Rock and Spiral. Uh, but yeah, what, what's interesting about this though is it is the uh, the lowest of the original Saw franchise in terms of box office, but still a major hit because we're talking about essentially 70 million dollar box office for an 11 million dollar budget still a very 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 high money making movie um but it wasn't uh th the reason for it though is pretty interesting do you guys have any theories on why in 2009 a saw movie after everyone being pretty much a hit would take such a, a drastic drop here 2009 Avengers. 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 Like a ridiculous Avengers. horror movie that came out that everyone was Potentially, on? Potentially. Because if it's Halloween, it must be Saw until another franchise might come along and take was on oh, the content? annual horror movie. Was of it the, the Purge? Ooh, Paranormal Activity. That was a good guess. Paranormal uh, Activity. Oh, came out, uh, Damn, Andy. That came out just around this and kind of just ate its lunch. Uh, was it the first activity. paranormal activity? Yes. Oh, damn. Yeah, that, okay, yeah. 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 that's a so good that one. <laughs> created a phenomenon there. So uh, that explains a whole bunch. Um, but anyways, that is the background on this one. Who do I want to start with? Nick, let's start with you for this one. Sure. Um, I enjoyed it. I will say I think it's a little. it was a little too simplistic. And I think it lacked a little bit of the tension that I liked from the cat and mouse game from Saw 5. Um, but I kind of liked... I mean, I vibed with the straightforward nature of it, but by the end, I was like, "This might be the first one I'm, 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 I'm waiting for it to kind of wrap up a little bit here," because I didn't think it was quite as clever as I wanted to, and maybe featured Jill just a little too much. <laughs> um, actually, favorite. probably a lot too much. Um, but I'm happy the series keeps going, and I'm happy. To, I mean, I'm, I'm still in it. I'm still ready for for the next saw. Oh, that's my favorite thing is that Nick is still in <laughs> six movies into this shit. Joey, you also have been watching these movies for the very first time. What do you think of this one? <clears throat> so Nick and I had differing opinions about Saw 5. I didn't really like it, and Nick did. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that I would <laughs> like this one, even though Nick's lower on this one. Um, I There's a couple different things I liked about it. I feel like the thing that I liked least about the last one that we watched is that everybody going through the traps didn't really connect at all with the like detective story. So it kind of seemed like, well, does this really matter and, or anything? And so the fact that the uh, the puzzle trap people are more connected to the mainline story, I think I liked a lot better. I thought the we had the fun editing back in this one, which always just makes it feel more like a Saw movie. Um, and I'm here's the thing. I'm always, I think I'm just going to be a sucker for all of these Saw movies because they do the Joey thing, which is that they cast enough like B-level actors that are just like guest stars in different things mm -hmm. that I get super hyped when they drop in. We had Luke Danes and uh, other people from the last one. This time we get the brother from Family Matters. We get the husband from Father of the Bride. I'm like, nobody <laughs> except for me cares about this, but this makes me like really invested in the Saw franchise because I'm like, what of my favorite movies and TV shows, Who, what side character is going to show up next? Uh, so I feel like that's part of my excitement for watching all of these. Um, I like that it was interesting to watch this and see that the blonde like reporter girl, it's like, oh, You've now made enough of these Saw movies that you're pulling from. She felt very, like, Gail Weathers inspired mm -hmm. and Scream and stuff like that. So it's interesting to see, like, what they kind of borrow and take from other 
historic uh, horror franchises. Um, but yeah, I had a really good time with this one. And I will say that the traps are like overall not as exciting, um, but I do feel like there were enough like pops of things that I think I liked them better than the mm-hmm. last one. I thought the, the trap started off incredibly strong with that first sequence. Yeah. And then, yeah, I'd kind of agree that the rest of them felt um, kind of not iterative, but just like we're starting to kind of run out of ideas at this point, you know? Um, I, I, I'm kind of all over the place with this movie because I think this movie is all over the place. I think <laughs> I, 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 I did not really love how much Jill is involved. I'm kind of bummed out by the ending of it. Uh, although I really love that um, that Hoffman kind of has that cool, clever moment at the end that I wasn't expecting them to do. That kind of that was like the big twist for me, where the rest of it was kind of like, oh, they're doing the family thing again, which is mm-hmm. neat in a way. But we that we've done that before. Uh, still caught me <laughs> off guard though, so I enjoyed that. Um, but yeah, I think just like uh, having <laughs> Jill insanely involved, having Amanda come back and just like this is just like kind of rough in a lot of moments for me. And I found myself looking at the clock more, even though it's only a 90 minute movie. And I haven't done that really with any of these movies. Alfredo. Like there's. A handful of issues with Saw 6. And one of the things that I mentioned earlier in the series is like, we're going to get more Jill. It's <laughs> bad. Um, <laughs> dude, so, it is so Cinemax softcore porn, dude. Right, right, right her, exactly. Her and Pamela stuff was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Screen time keeps <laughs> wrapping up. There's just like no emotion in her eyes when she delivers her lines. It's so bad. Do you think they casted her? Knowing that she was going to be in so many no. of these movies, uh, yeah, <laughs> I no know. chance. I don't because I think they probably would have if they had known she was going to be in the next five movies or four mm-hmm. movies. I really think they might have pushed for someone who had a little bit more star power. See, but the thing is, every time she was in one of the early movies, it was solely as a setup for the next movie. So they clearly knew they didn't know what they were going to do. Yeah, but she was kind of just like the ooh, what's she up to? And it's like ah, fuck. Now she's here. We have to deal with her. Yeah, I feel like I feel like let's be perfectly honest. Nobody in this series is a great actor, but they're great for the roles they're playing, and they're great for the world that they're creating. With the exception of a, a few of these people that are that are coming in here, unfortunately, the actress that plays Jill is just not not there either. But like, she needs to be on the level of range that Shawnee Smith has, which is still ridiculous, but mm-hmm. is it works in the world. And unfortunately, the uh, Jill just can't. She's just is kind of one note the entire time, even at the end when she's supposed to. There's like one moment. Where she shows an emotion that I'm like, oh, that's a real emotion, but it's the wrong emotion. It's when she's putting the the envelope through the slot, and she's like, Ugh, and it's kind of like weirdly horny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm halfway like, expecting an emotion. <laughs> I'm like weird. I was like, this is wrong. This is off. This is With, so strange. Right? With every line delivered, I'm, I'm half expecting her to look at the camera. And, yeah. and like oh, for yeah. like approval oh, of the line, on. like every, how you want me to deliver that. Everything is um, so bad from her. But yeah, sorry, Fredo. Keep going. Yeah, go for it, Fredo. Um, with that being said, I don't know why. I've always really enjoyed Six. I, and maybe it's because I like the way the twist is comparatively to the two previous ones. Um, I know that I think, what, Five was setting up, like, setting up um, Strom. And then Four was, like, the Hoffman reveal, I think. Hoffman reveal and that three and four were at the same time. Yeah, and then so I was just like, uh, I'm not quite sure. And um, <clears throat> I like how this one kind of, I don't know, I, I like the flashbacks in this one a lot more, right? We we got a little bit more behind the scenes on things like why, uh, like between Hoffman and Amanda, essentially. And, yeah. and then you also kind of like set up uh, a handful of things. I don't like Joe, but... Jill sets a handful of things in motion that 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 um that pay off, in my opinion. But then also, I just like I said, I I like the 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 personal tie-in that um, Jigsaw has with the like insurance guy. And then I do agree the traps weren't 
as great. They kind of had like a diminishing return over time on that. But I do like the fact that he essentially had to, he was forced to make these choices mm. or, but you know, when he had this algorithm on like who has a higher probability and then also like, in order to help people get out, he had to sacrifice himself, a piece of himself continuously. So I don't know. I just, I like Saw 6. See, I, yeah. I liked, I think that was the thing that kept it going for me as well, was that the the, the traps were interactive and collaborative. And they, they that he, he constantly had to make a choice that was different than the last one, which I thought was pretty interesting. We've seen that kind of before where with, uh, I think it was Saw 2 with Jeff and the judge. Um, and a few other moments where you're, one person's interacting with the other person to save them. But this one really was like, you know, a choice that he had to make between life and death for different people. And the shotgun moment was was intense oh. and crazy. And I, I, I kind of dug that one a little bit. Tim, what did yeah. you think? You know, I'm, I'm kind of with Alfredo on this one. And it's funny because uh, I, 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 I keep saying I saw one, two, and three a million times. But after that, I think I only saw them each once in theaters. And that was it. And um, it being over a decade ago, I don't really remember the differences between each iteration. I overall remember like ideas or themes or characters or traps, but not so much the movies um, front to back. And um, over time, you see other people's like ranked lists of every Saw movie. And six is always extremely high. Like it is in most people's top three, if not top two. And so going into this, I was like, oh, shit, like I maybe I was just a dumb kid back then and I was missing out on something like what what was it about this that I didn't get then that I might get now? And I definitely enjoyed it a lot more than I did originally, just like uh, four and five. Um, but I don't think it's nearly as good as people like kind of talk about it. Like everyone talks about it, it's like, yo, no, 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 no. There's another classic in this. And I wouldn't go that far. I don't think this is anywhere close to the uh, the original one or two. Um, but I do think that this one tried harder than any of the last couple ones. Like I think that the whole insurance, uh, storyline, like makes more sense and kind of like adds, I mean, I don't think it like works in real life perfectly, but like, I think for the story that this uh, movie's giving us it, I believe it. And it kind of gives context to what's going on, on the, uh, detective level and the trap level and the, um, protag protagonist, if you even want to call it <laughs> level, um, that, I, it just felt like they tried so much harder than they did the last couple movies of trying to match the vibe of Saw <coughs> 1 where it kind of felt like there was a detective element, uh, whereas Saw 5 was cat and mouse, but less so in a in a, a, a show way, more in a tell way uh, with them. <laughs> but with this, it's like I, I think that the traps are easily the weakest of the franchise. Then they don't really kind of like add too much. The opening one was exciting, and I like the competitive elements of them. But yeah, the most like iconic trap of this is the the shotgun carousel, and it's like it's kind of weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it feels less like a trap and more just. Um, I'm sorry, Tim. We have a way of choosing what the most iconic trap we'll is. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> okay, so no future spoilers opinion. here. Okay. But um, I, I do think that it's, it's there's just something so enjoyable about how serious this movie, the, this franchise takes itself and how many flashbacks. They try to fit flashbacks anywhere they can. It's like Cobra Kai. It's just, I literally have that written down of like, this is giving Cobra Kai a run for its money in this installment. <laughs> yeah, and I, I love the flashback stuff. I love the setting up the kind of rivalry between Amanda and Hoffman live for that shit that that is so yeah. cool to me i i enjoy jill like it's the type of soap <laughs> i don't want to say it's so bad it's good but it's so bad it's bad you but can't it's like turn away yeah, yeah you like, turn away. like you rewind it a couple times ago did you really deliver yeah. it like that <laughs> yeah like it's horrible that's the one they went um, with but the reveals the of like that she talked to jigsaw moments before he died in saw three is just absolutely hilarious to me like there's just like reveals that feel like they're just like looking straight at the camera and being like guys we're doing it we're doing it like why are you doing it you can stop doing it but please yeah. keep doing it because this is why we're watching i love the twist at the end whatever you want to call it i love hoffman being tested with the reverb reverse bear trap him getting out of it there's just something about the last six minutes of this movie that just get me so hyped and so excited. The montage of all the doors closing, all the game overs, the music being crazier than it's ever been. <laughs> like, they just go, went off the rails with this one. But my favorite thing, we've talked a lot of shit about Jill. We've now had this man for multiple movies. 
I just can't believe how much Hoffman is just a dude. He's just the dude <laughs> on camera. Like, there is nothing about this man that says actor. There's nothing about this man that says he's a cop or a detective no, good or somebody that would torture people this way. He's just a dude. <laughs> no, yeah. he's, he's like, at this point, the main character of this fucking franchise. Yeah. I'm sorry. Ow. I don't, I just, I really can't stand for this, that you speaking ill of my man Costas Mandalore. Okay. <laughs> this guy is a much storied actor. There's He's a no legend way that's his time. Name. That's totally his name. That's his name. Remember, don't you remember I told you it was not, it's not the guy from my big fat Greek wedding who is his yeah. brother? Well, we, I remember going through all that. <laughs> his name is Costas. Costas Mandalore, and he's Greek. Costas. Mandalore, sick. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, I, I, I might be I, mispronouncing it. It's M A N D Y L O R. But we'll go with I like Mandalore. Like I the Mandalorian. Know. Yeah. I, like um, cool. I, I agree with you, Tim, in that, like, the the best thing this movie has going for it is that it is easily the most focused of any of the movies in the last like several iterations where everything always kind of felt disconnected but this one feels like everything is related to each other for a very important reason and i feel like that's that's maybe where you're talking about that you know they tried to <laughs> make like a, a script that is you know, not just random references to random things like the the house fire in the last movie I felt was just really uninspired. Um, but having all of this kind of revolve around like a super based jigsaw, by the way, like just like <laughs> this this country, the capitalism and all this stuff, and like like <laughs> go forth, comrade, like hell yeah, jigsaw, <laughs> room for you, brother. All right, yeah, cool. I will say I also do like um because I usually didn't care for Hoffman. I do like the fact that like it, he's kind of set up in, in the previous movies of like I can do this, I can do this, and here it's clear that like he's no jigsaw. You know what I mean? Like you're yeah. not. But does he like? But does he want to be doing this? He doesn't, right? Yeah. Like this is yeah. He's not trying to continue this. This is like he's trying to get out of it. Yeah, he's right? trying to like wipe his hands. He's trying to wipe his hands yeah. clean of it, which I which I like. Um, and it's great because because my man Costas just playing it like you wouldn't know. Any scene from scene, he's either getting a cup of coffee or he's about to murder six people. <laughs> That's the Maybe subtlety at the same of time. Yeah. Exactly. I don't know. I like um, he's back up against the wall in this one. I yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that yeah. he's sort of like He's just sort of like, I'm just trying to get out of this horrible situation that I put myself into with my own greed. And then that, that goes to back up, or not my own greed, my own, um, you know, him killing that guy and, 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 and wanting revenge. And I like that that goes to back up the fact that he's never actually been tested. Even, even when he was tested originally, right, there was no bullet in the gun. Yeah. Um, and so he really wasn't tested. And then that, like, his rivalry with Amanda and how he kind of, like, screwed her over and all that stuff, it's, it's interesting. Um, the question is, will Jill ever be tested? That is that's an that excellent, excellent question. That's an excellent question that we'll have to. Find and by that out I later. mean tested by her acting coach. Yeah. Never, <laughs> never, we're being, never will be. We're being tested by having a watch. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's our how patience is. is being tested. But I, I, again, I want to say that I love this franchise's commitment to uh, Tobin Bell's Jigsaw dying in Saw Three. Just hundred percent, he's dead, and his. He is still a character in these movies. In a large not just presence. flashbacks. It's Big like presence. he's still putting people through games in a way that, like, yeah, it's convoluted, but like it's real. It's not pulling, it's not using magic or any bullshit. It's like it's he planned all this fucking shit out. It's wild. <laughs> when will it end? Dude, that's the way to, that's the way to do it. And when I pass, you think you'll be I'll be all done and over, but then you're gonna get a tape, Tim. Great. And it's gonna, <laughs> it's, and it's gonna tell you that it's not mm -hmm. over. And it's going to oh be me in front of a green screen with different responses. So I can always continue this, this series. <laughs> You're going to hear Kevin giggling off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be perfectly honest, though. Alfredo, I would, if I had to put money on one person in my sphere doing that, it wouldn't be you. It would be Greg Miller. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. that's yeah. terrifying. Yeah. Greg Miller would do that before You're he so dies. Fun. We'll do that tomorrow. But like, do you want to play a game? <laughs> he's never seen the Saw movies. <laughs> that's just Thank how he God. doesn't matter. Thank God he's not on this one. Because who knows what I he know. would be putting us oh, through. God, he would be no. inspired. Like, that is, <laughs> oh, that is no. <laughs> All right, we're going to get to the plot, uh, but real quick, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Did you burn your last piece of toast? Have the avocados gone bad? 
is the hot sauce bottle empty, you can try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. You already know how much all of us here at Kinda Funny love DoorDash, but with thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. You want even more value? You can save on all of your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pass membership. With easy substitutes right in the app and best in class customer support, you can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code KINDA at checkout. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code KINDA. Don't forget, that's code KINDA for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, that's shadyrays.com. Use the code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. And it has surprised multiple of my friends and people at Kind of Funny how many subscriptions they have that they forgot they are still paying for. That's why I'm such a big fan of Rocket Money. It's so easy to cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bills and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. Andy. All your life, your family never mattered. What I'm going to ask you to do is to save Eddie Winslow. <laughs> Let's play a game. That was incredible. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Saw 6. Piranha. <laughs> is how we pronounce that word, yeah. which was weird. Yeah, it was very weird. Uh, Simone wakes up with a device on her head that's about to screw through her temples. Eddie does oh, too, listen. and they know each other. She screams for him not to lean forward, but the butthole doesn't listen. Who will offer the most flesh in the next hour? Uh, Simone, of course, said this advantage because of all those Pilates she has done. Eddie, on the other hand, is packing on a couple pounds from the old Mickey D's. Uh, she goes straight to the hand, and then Eddie cuts his own stomach up, and she's like, shit, the hand ain't going to do it. So she hacks her own arm off. It's right. fucked, y'all. This whole thing is like, I I feel like this was great for multiple reasons, both in world and for us as an audience, where it played off the fact that we understand what's going on. We've seen these traps. It's the opening trap in the movie. We get it. But I like that they're even like, oh, fuck, it's a jigsaw trap. We know what's going on. Like, these characters understand this in the world now, and they just immediately jump to fucking their bodies up. Like, they're like, there's no getting out of this. We will die if we don't do this because we've heard, we've seen the books, all that shit. They get it. And uh, so them just, him just going for cutting it all off. Absolutely graphic. Hated watching that. Uh, the the shot of her just lifting her shirt up to show us like <laughs> she has something to cut. Very funny. So <laughs> stupid. Know, like, oh damn it, I needed. forgot I didn't have extra fat to cut off. <laughs> oh, so so jacked. Um, so but jacked. I want to give a shout out to this actress because I thought that she did a damn good job. 
like compared to most of these people putting putting traps and stuff, I was like, you feel like a level above people. And it was funny because then I looked it up. She's actually the winner of a contest to get in this. Movie, really? Yeah. Which is what? from did a good job. VH1's reality show Scream Queens. Scream Queens. Oh my gosh, that's cool. And like legitimately, I before seeing that, I noticed. I was like, hey, she's pretty good here. And I looked her up. I'm like, oh, that's weird. Scream so, Queens is a reality show. There's also a like script or okay. regular show. I was about to be like, you're cr- oh my god! I was about to be like this. The, the whole the show the whole time was like a reality contest. I thought it was a drama <laughs> or something. Wait, Andy, I'm, well, go ahead, off now. I'm I just you know I'm go- I just googled Scream Queens and like there's a lot of are, is the host Amanda Jamie Lee and Jamie. I thought Jamie Lee Carter? Curtis was in that at some point. Scream, that's the one you're talking about. That's the Ryan Murphy show. That's not the reality ah, one. Ah, okay. okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The, But the no, no, reality no, no, no. one, I think, is the Amanda one, right? Yeah. The, oh, yeah, Amanda yeah. from Sorry, Amanda from Saw. Amanda Shawnee from Smith, Saw. And James Gunn. No, yeah. sorry. Shawnee Smith, Amanda from Saw, yes. is the host of the show. Yeah. Where's Eddie yeah, Winslow? <laughs> and, and James Gunn was a judge. Huh. Yeah. huh. Okay. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis was in the show, which that was pretty good. Yeah. I like the show. That's weird. Andy, what would you do if you woke up in this track, in this trap, and it was like you got to cut a pound of your stomach off, and it required both of us to take our shirts off? You wake up, I'm on the other side of the room from you, but I've been working out. And then I take my shirt, I hold my shirt up, and I've got washboard abs. And then you go, Nick, did you just put us both in this trap so I could see your washboard abs? <laughs> what would you do then? What you're would like, you Andy, lift up your shirt, see what you can cut off, and then then look at me lift my shirt up. <laughs> and you're like, are you going to die just to show me that you have better abs than me? <laughs> I am, Andy. It's a competition, last competition. Anyway, Eddie uh, fails, and he gets his head drilled through, and everybody screams, wah da da Saw six. Well, I, would, I assume someone did this title trick. On after I laughed real hard right here because I just imagine uh, when the title hits a European man going apologizing and it's saying Savi. <laughs> like, <that's what> I'm... <laughs> when it hit the screen, I'm sitting on that. <laughs> I'm sitting on that fucking beanbag right there, and I just went Savi. <laughs> it just incredible. made me laugh Never so incredible. incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh man uh we cut back to stram agent stram was getting crushed by the death trap uh, hoffman of course gets away in the slow moving uh glass coffin we didn't even see back. the arm again like god we, damn. Yeah, we no. definitely didn't but they, they shot it and they owned it so they might as well throw it in there it, it ups the gore factor uh hoffman walks back into the room uh, disassembles the trap the walls go back and uh, hoffman's uh, or stram's body is hanging there like a just massive piece of bloody meat uh debbie Meets with William about his disposition. Debbie is a lawyer, of course. William now is our main character. He is a piece of shit insurance VP who who has an algorithm that scams his clients uh, out of uh, of their money when they're or not, not out of money, excuse me, out of uh, coverage for healthcare when they're dying. Uh, Harold being chief among them. Harold is and this guy has been in a bunch of stuff. This actor that played Harold. Uh, anyway, he's like, dude, you, you're basically. Oh yeah, this is George or Ben from. Uh, or Brian McKenzie from Father of the Bride. Father of the Bride, that's what One I and thought. two, okay. he's also in Scandal, if now, you watch Scandal. I always get him confused oh, with just... the guy from The Good Wife, who is not that guy. That guy is the guy from... One of these guys is from Adventures in Babysitting. The other guy is uh, from... Not adventures and babies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's oh, like, you're, sen- you're, you're sentencing me to a death sentence. This is a death sentence. Uh, of course, uh, we, he's like, I'm sorry, man. Nothing I can do. And Debbie's like, who finds these awesome errors? And he goes, oh, let me take you on a little tour of the dog pit. This mm-hmm. is my rough and tumble guys. That <laughs> find. And then right as he says it on cue, some guy's like, I just found, hey, Mr. Everett, I just found an error that's going to save us $200,000. Like, fuck yeah. And high William's five. Like, fuck yeah. That's the big a six. Lot of money. I'm like, great, they're named. We're so badass. Uh, meanwhile, Hoffman gets a call uh, to the scene of the newest game. Feds have taken over uh, the crime scene. And guess what? It's Erickson. Erickson's like, I'm so happy to have been invited back to this series. Hopefully I live through. <laughs> they found Strom's fingerprints on one of the victims, but they have something he doesn't know about. Dun, dun, dun. Perez is still alive. Let's go! I pumped <laughs> so hard when this happened. I was stoked. I love her. And Costas, in his incredible range, goes, you let me think she was dead? I don't know who I can trust. And it's like, are you are you ordering a pizza late night high or... <laughs> 
Are you feeling betrayed? What is the range of emotions we're doing here? Of course, Pamela, a reporter, tries to interview Hoffman. She wants to get close to Jill Tuck and knows about uh, the box that Jigsaw gave her. And he's like, how'd you know that? She's like, I know everything. Uh, and then Hoffman goes over to Simone, the lady who cut her arm off. And uh, he's I like, just, Did you learn? real quick, like this, this little arrangement they have just seems so informal to be like, well, how can I trust you all? Well, from now on, everything we know, you know, handshake. And it's like, they're like <laughs> I mean, it, this has got to be a little bit more official. <laughs> like, we can't yeah. just be like, Jigsaw. I pinky promise. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Um, um, I say two. I say two things. Uh, one, Ho- Hoffman did this really weird when he found out that Perez was like alive. He like steps into her face and starts like looking, like looking at her and kind of like sizing her up, like right in her face for no reason whatsoever. You should be dead. And, uh, <laughs> and then uh, George Newbern, the guy that plays Harold, they got screwed over with the insurance stuff. He plays Superman in like every animated for the past like. 10 like, like 15 oh, years. Really? yeah and he's also oh. superman multiverses so i was like oh that's cool oh. Um, so random for that guy <laughs> but good for him he's got a good voice he's got a great voice i trust that it's truth justice the american way <laughs> uh let's see great. jill uh, uh hoffman goes to interview uh, uh, simone and he's like well did you learn your lesson at which point i'm like what a fucking weird question that's a weird question and she's like look at my goddamn arm what, what am i fucking supposed to learn from this and he's like Great point. Yeah. Uh, Jill Tuck relives the dumbest scene from Saw 4 uh, <laughs> when we finally get to see what's in the box. Numbered uh, envelopes and a device of some sort. We don't quite see what it is, but we kind of get. We're like, oh, I wonder if that's the fucking bear mask. Would that be so cool if they brought that back? One of the envelopes, of course, has Pamela's picture in it. Erickson and Perez tell Hoffman that the knives used for uh, to cut the little jigsaw piece out of Seth uh, and the last murder are different than the knives used uh, by, by Jigsaw, which means there's a second person potentially doing it. Hoffman's like, what if he just got another knife? And the guy's like, fuck, you stumped me. This whole bit is just Hilarious. so funny because like, oh you could just tell the writers are like, what do we got? What do we have to work with? What, yeah. what can we do? And they're like, oh, what if it was a different knife? They're like, yeah, but wouldn't they question that? I'd be like, yeah, well, we can just ask the question in the movie, yeah. and then, then we can move on. <laughs> we'll leave it to the audience member to decide whether or not they like that. We, we Yeah, we think so, we think it's a different person because the knife blade, like one was using a surgical knife, and then Hoffman's just like, I don't believe you. <laughs> He's like, all right. <laughs> I think that's I your opinion. I've heard it both ways. Uh, Hoffman pays Jill a visit. Uh, he says, the game begins tonight. And he's like, but I want control of all of the game. I don't want to see you ever again. Give me all the envelopes. So she gives him all the envelopes, all Man, five of them. It's just like the way, for number six. The way this, like, as if, like, Jill's acting doesn't give off enough, like, what I was mentioning earlier, Cinemax, softcore porn playing at 10 p.m. that like maybe they show a boob maybe they don't but like (laughs) the way that it's shot the camera quality the composition of the shots the act like everything involved is feels so much lower budget than anything that's happened in the past five movies it's it's it's, really weird it's it's getting more and more it, it seems like it's getting lesser and lesser in quality even though we should be pa- like the first movie was recorded on a goddamn Nokia phone or something. Like, <laughs> like how how is this how is this franchise looking worse over time? It's very very odd. Oh, strap in for next week, you guys. Oh, I can't no. wait. I can't freaking wait. I gotta watch uh, it on a 3DS or what, Tim? Dude, <laughs> it legitimately might be the ugliest movie ever. Made, oh no. But- yeah, I'm excited. I can't wait. Uh, Jill has a flashback to a time when John reintroduced her to Amanda. It turns out Amanda was one of her patients. He's like, the process works. Amanda's now clean. It's like, is she? Uh, so even this though right here, she's convinced no, that the I'm games. Are... Wait, hold on. What's that? This right here. Yeah, Jill is like, you're right. The flashback happens. She's talking to Jigsaw. Jigsaw's in the room. Jill is like a step or two into the room, like from the doorway. <laughs> And then after like two minutes of conversation, Jigsaw's like, look, look to your left. Three feet from you is Amanda. And it's like, how did you not notice Amanda there the whole time? Like, what does she work for the League of Shadows? Yeah. And so like, this room is not a huge room. And all of a sudden it's like, hi, I am here now. And I'm like, what is the other door? Uh, of course, even though she's uh, convinced that the games are necessary, Jill continues to be a bad actor. <laughs> Uh, the power goes out in William's office. 
He gets the drop on someone with a gun, only to discover after shooting the man that it's a security guard looking for, you guessed it, Pig Man, or Mr. Pig, as the kids in the neighborhood will now call him. He's old enough. William wakes up in the game. This time, John doesn't bother wearing a master of messages. He's like, everyone knows who I am, buddy. I don't have to wear that weird-ass fucking thing or have my little doll talk for me. I'm just John. It's crazy, He's right? John. If we see him, it's the man. He's talking on camera. Uh, wow. William has four straps uh, on all You'll four of his limbs. You'll notice it's me. It's because the doll, the doll, uh, it's kind of broken. Uh, some paint tripped off of it. I can get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> I tried it. It didn't look good on camera. Uh, <laughs> Uh, William has four straps on his limbs and four tests he must complete, or they, each strap will detonate, blowing his hands and feet off. Uh, if you don't reach the end before the timer <laughs> hits zero, you will never see your family again. Nick, I was going to say, and if you don't believe me, just watch the watch the example. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so ah, it's, oh, it's, shit. it's so funny for her to be like it, it, your wrists and your legs will blow off. Like oh damn that I bet you that's pretty fucked up. I know. Check it out. <laughs> it's like <laughs> oh we don't need to see an example actually. <laughs> it's fucking funny. Uh, that from there we go over to Brent and Tara who wake up in the cell. They watch a video feed of William strapped in, and we're led to believe that this is his family. Uh, which is a fun little red herring. Test number one, Hank, the janitor, uh, has to breathe more than William or he gets his chest crushed. Ugh. This, this is a weirdo. Cool. This is... Yeah. They're just straight up like, I mean, like if Kevin Quella watches, this is the anti-smoker agenda right here. <laughs> like, <laughs> they're just like, this guy's sick and he just keeps on fucking ripping heaters. Like, <laughs> can't do it, man. Can't do it. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, I'll, this is the first time we get the hint that these are all like health related. Uh, he has to make the choice of like, hey, do you pick this guy? Or you pick yourself. This guy's a smoker. He knows he's it's bad for him, but he kept smoking. Uh, and then, of course, William wins. Hank gets his ribs crushed in. William's freed, uh, but he notices that he has a cut and some uh, some stuff sewed on his side. Uh, maybe Jigsaw took his kidney. Maybe not. We don't know. That's 100% what I thought, too. That's what yeah, I thought. Damn. Was, damn, dude. Was he selling the whole thing so, the whole time? <laughs> yeah, how like, does this tie into the insurance thing? The number one, <laughs> yeah. I just thought he was like, I had to fund this somehow. So your your, your punishment is having to find a replacement kidney. <laughs> <laughs> like That's going to be uh, really tough. Tough. And he keeps talking about the, uh, the I think it was Saw 4, the trap with the, or Saw 3, or Saw 3, the trap with the, the freeze, where it's kind of like lacking and it's not creativity it's more just an interest level in watching it because it doesn't like it they're clearly being tortured in real life i wouldn't want that to happen to me but like there's something about watching it that just like feels too goofy this is the other side of the traps that i don't like where it just feels like simultaneously overly complex of a setup but then also just like it's literally just who can hold their breath longest like it just seems like there's like it, it was meant for how complicated it all was it felt like it was missing a couple steps of like you need to either do this or do this but instead it was just like hey there's two people whoever breathes first loses <laughs> You're like, all yeah. right cool cool uh i wanted the janitor pee, to be like no i smoke weed that's not cigarettes it's, <laughs> yeah, it's good for you it's medicinal <laughs> He gets, uh, he gets a key and frees one of his hands. Uh, we come back over to uh, the cell that Tara and Brent are in. A massive tank of hydrofolic acid is connected to a junction box that says live or die. Tara knows they're there because of a dear old dad. He's like, we're here because your father. And I'm like, that's a weird pull. Knowing what we know at the end. <laughs> you know what, Nick? You're yeah. fucking right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it works really well with what they're trying to make us think. Yeah. Well, we have the answers. Yeah. No. <laughs> but I guess she saw William on the screen and was like, oh, that's the guy that killed your dad. But then would you think that's we're here why because of I'd be like, what the dad? fuck? I'd be so confused. Yeah. I don't know. Wait, did they? Anyway. Did they? What? Did they actually know that that was... The insurance guy? I thought they didn't realize I, it until they saw him at the reveal at the end. Well, I think well, there's a, a shot guy. of them sitting in the lobby while yeah. he's getting denied coverage. And then he's mm -hmm. like, sorry. They said no. And they're like, you're going to kill him. You know what I mean? They're but all they like mad outside. show that till the end. Right? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. like obviously, yeah, yeah, they yeah. know that the insurance guy fucked over their dad. But in that moment where they're looking at the CCTV cam hidden mm -hmm. camera stuff or whatever, mm -hmm. do they know that like, oh, that's the insurance guy who's doing this trap. We're here because of dad, or did they? I just imagine she, she that must right? have. Yeah. She must have because she says, "Oh, we're here because of your dad." Oh, okay. And so we're I led to she believe look that William was is is there is her her husband, but it's not. I right? thought she was gonna look at her son and be like, "It's because you didn't put you didn't put the fucking shopping carts back when we went grocery shopping <laughs> the other day. <laughs> you left them out there." <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
Uh, Hoffman watches from a two-way mirror up top. He's graduated from peepholes. Pamela meets with Jill. She knows. She shows her a note that was at the location when John died. And she goes, uh, and, and as she's walking around, Jill uh, screams, have you met my friend, Mr. Piggles? And then Mr. Big Man attacks her. Uh, this this is where I wrote the note. The Pamela and Jill door conversation oh. is a porno without porn. It is uh, just, it is, so, oh my God. It's so like, bad. We've seen a lot, it's like, Joey, me and you have talked about Saw 3 being just hard to watch. Yeah. I think this takes the cake. <laughs> this one scene of just them talking. This was a rough exchange, yeah. Be the worst acted scene in all the Saw movies. I, I think so. I totally think so. Yeah. Because it's um, not like, a decent mediocre actor mixed with Jill. It's two pretty bad actors on screen at the same time. And yeah, the, the, this scene was just, it, it was one of those that I had to rewind a couple times just to kind of fully bathe in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, there's still the tech that was like, uh, got you strong or whatever. <laughs> See, that was good though. <laughs> I'm in support of that. That was fun. Commit. Uh, William spots a tattoo on his arm that says the party, I think. I'm not sure I round a bunch of times. It's really hard to make out, but I'm pretty sure it's the party. And it reminds him of the first time he met John at, you guessed it, a party. And John tells him about his cool formula that he uses to dick people over. Uh, or, sorry, uh, William tells him about that. Uh, John told him that he's not uh, taking into consideration the most important variable of all, the will to live. Uh, William walks into a room that looks like a terrarium at a zoo. Two signs light up on the monitors in front of him that says, take and them, I believe. In those uh, moments, like, you, you don't notice it, but Jigsaw, like, he's like, oh, you do that? Oh, so you decide who who lives and dies? And he, like, gets a notebook and, like, let me write this guy's name down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got a good this idea guy. for this guy. No, no. <laughs> this is the fucking guy. I, so we, with all these movies, there's always, like, the different kind of, uh, not so much set piece, but kind of, like, the where the main traps are set. And it being in a zoo, pretty cool. Like, I, mean, I feel like yeah. that gives it a couple like fun options, especially with like the mm -hmm. the voyeurism of it all of them mm -hmm. kind of being in the exhibits. Pretty sick. Pretty crazy to think though, because you're like, how many defunct zoos could there possibly be? Yeah, in Chicago, in the Chicago land, right? And that they're just like you open just need one. and people like you people, just need one. People That's wouldn't notice point. if like all this electricity was on the grid of this defunct zoo. Anyway. Uh, let's see. William's file clerk is there and his secretary. They both hang in the balance with razor wire around their neck on a tiny little pedestal. Ugh. And I start thinking to myself, what was this particular thing used for in the zoo? Is it like was a carnival for? game? Like a dunking tank or something? I don't know, man. It's pretty <laughs> twisted. That is pretty <laughs> twisted. It's pretty <laughs> fucking twisted. Uh, Are we dunking like the polar bears? Or like I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. If it is, man, it's a good way to piss a polar bear off. Uh, one, of course, his secretary has cancer, but she has a family. Uh, his file clerk is young, healthy, and has no family. William is, uh, the cho that's the choice William should make, but what's he going to do? When face-to-face -face with his victims, it gets a little harder, of course. He lets his file clerk die, uh, and, he, and it gets super bloody and smashed up against the old, the old window. Cool. Um, no, Addie thinks right? him, and he leaves her standing precariously on a platform with razor wire on her neck, and he's like, Just good fucking luck getting off this. Then he, he let the younger guy die. Yeah. Not yeah. Yeah. Clerk. Yeah. No, his secretary lived. Oh, the file clerk yeah. gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But also, like, how's well, she supposed to get out of that? I don't, yeah. That's, like, I was like, she she just this woman. unwrap this razor wire yeah. that's right. embedded in my neck. Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know how big this pit is. <laughs> it's like, there's no way out of this thing. How are you getting out of there? <laughs> Uh, let's see. I love that right now. <laughs> like, I, I know we're just harping on this, but I'm looking at my notes in order, and I know here, he let the younger guys die, or younger guy die. And my next note, Jill really is the worst casting ever. <laughs> <laughs> Not good. This is so bad. <laughs> I feel like that gives the rest of the actors in this movie such a pass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Like, so many of them yeah. are not good, but they're not as bad as Jill, but we just don't care because of Jill. It's so freaking true. Maybe that's why they cast her. <laughs> You ever walk into a room and there's just a really bad smell and you just think to yourself, there could be other bad smells in here, but I don't know because like, this smells so bad. I'm just focusing on this one. That entire scenario I don't think is ever. Like, <laughs> I thought one really bad smell to distract from the other smell. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been like, mm, it could be worse. Joey, I got to assume this happened to Nick like this morning or something. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> was it the time that you walked into this room after the twenty or the forty oh, hour that was Starfield beefaroni. stream, and you were yeah. like, "Ooh, it does not smell great." That here. smelled like Teen Spirit. It was just, it was stinky. <laughs> <here. laughs> smelled like stale breath. Uh, let's see. Another door opens, and William gets another key to unlock his risk. Uh, Tara wa- uh, wonders if they can use the acid from the tank to burn through the bars. So there's no way to get over there without burning their hands. I, Pamela, I, I, plays so her. I, I have an issue oh, with that. I, me too, Joe. Like you got clothing all over yourself. It's you got a shoes. Jacket. You've got like like that you can transfer some of this at, you're not going to lose yeah. it all in like while it's burning through shit you yeah, can like rub clothes. it on the fucking little air like little. butter it was so annoying i hate that i hate that they were so defeatist immediately to tell the audience sorry can't you it's like ah, that's, bullshit. that's bullshit you guys don't have the will to live yeah is really what it yeah, boils down to yeah uh, let's see. Tara wonders. I'm uh, sorry. Pamela plays her tape. Uh, John is not happy with how uh, she was. Exp- uh, sorry. Sigurdsson is not happy with how uh, she exploited uh, his message for her own game. Erickson calls. They found Seth Baxter's tape and they want to talk about something time sensitive. Uh, Jill heads to the hospital with another envelope uh, for for the box John left her. Uh, she gets super horny with a little and puts a little tongue out when she puts the the, the envelope in the doctor's slot. Which is just a Nick. weird. I hate that this is how we're. That's what it is. It's yeah. a slot. And she put the big thick envelope. I in mean, the Joey, slot. don't no. say we. Like, oh, there's no. one person who feels this way. <laughs> yeah, but we are. We're all being subjected to it, and that's really my issue. You would like to play a game. <laughs> she, Jill, is there, man. Uh, we get a flashback of John, Amanda, and Hoffman setting up the rack. Which Jill is, like, is there, like, man. She's just there, man. <laughs> Uh, Amanda and Hoffman. Does this not go against some sort of like doctor code that she has to like know about all this? Like the Hippocratic like Oath never like, hurt people. Yeah, yeah. no, like, like the, the Hippocratic main Oath. doctor code, like yeah. never do harm to another human being. Yeah, yeah, oh, it kind of yeah. does. Yeah. But remember, she's an addiction specialist, so we're not sure like where she got her certification. Yeah, maybe it was from like an online university or something. She like was that. actually supposed to be know. a vet. <laughs> yeah, she. <laughs> For all we know, she just opened that I thing. I feel like that would have made more sense where she had, like, all of this medical knowledge, but not for humans. I feel like it could have been more interesting than, but I don't that know. It could have been. Um, let's see. Uh, we get then a flashback. that's how they get in the zoo because she's like, hey, let me write <laughs> the next up. one. Yeah. Let me write Jill's backstory next time. Oh, God. I think, you know what, oh, Joy? Sorry. That's all of our homework. Before the next one, we all have to write a little blurb about Jill's backstory. Uh, she was a vet at the zoo. Uh, we get a flashback of John, Amanda, and Hoffman setting up the rack. Uh, Amanda so and cool. Hoffman get into it. And she says, yeah. when's it going to be your time for a game? He's like, I don't fucking play games. Uh, I love this shit. I, I just, I mean, I, I love the tie back to other movies, especially the movies I actually really like, like three. Um, but the Amanda Hoffman stuff, I just, I really dug it. And it's been something it. that I wanted more of in the other ones. And I, I just feel like. This is like the most, uh, I think Alfredo said it earlier, but it's like, this is the most I've liked Hoffman. And even though he is just a dude, I like the dude more in this one. I think it's because putting him directly against Amanda and like the reveals we get later of what the letter was that Hoffman wrote Amanda in uh, Saw 3. So fucking good. Love that shit. Very, very cool. Uh, and let's see. Uh, he says uh, he oh he orders a man to go to take Doctor Lin from the hospital, and Jill intervenes to stop John. He promises her when this is done, I'll provide a way out for you. And she's like, "You mean a way out where like people don't think I was married to a psychopath for a really really long time?" He's like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> uh, and then uh, he gives her a key to the box that she then creepily wears around her neck for the next for, neck for the next six months. Uh, she puts you'll, her, you'll, who the fuck knows you'll know what to do with it when it happens or whatever and yeah. <laughs> I just really wanted like 10 years later like oh is this the key that I'm supposed to use and he's like oh f- you still have that damn well, I was not yeah. I, I forgot about that <laughs> <laughs> my problem Should've would be like that. what happens if it gets put in that one drawer with all the other keys you forgot about and you're like shit I don't know which key <laughs> supposed to go in this box <laughs> she puts the envelope through the slot in the door at the hospital and it's definitely caught on CCTV in fact they make a note to, to show us the shot with the bad CCTV effects that you get in After Effects uh, William notices another note on his arm that says final decision he remembers when John came to him to get an experimental therapy but he claimed but, but John's claim got denied because it would put him in breach of policy quote you think it's the living that will have ultimate judgment over you because the dead will have no claim over your soul, but you may be mistaken. I'm like, this guy's going to kill me. This guy's yeah. going to kill yeah. me from the yep. grave. Uh, William enters a boiler room and plays well, another on, tape. Hold on, hold on. I also want to. Piranha. I don't know how loud that is. <laughs> Piranha. It was perfect. I get it. I get it. Piranha. Cool, perfect. <laughs> I had to clip it out. I had to clip out that audio. 
it's just, it's one of those it's one of those things now. when you're when your friends trying to prove that he's smarter than you because he went to like he went to like a UC and you went to a state, state school and you say piranha mm. and he goes piranha piranha oh Is yeah people say uh, was it Porsche. The Porsche. Oh yeah, yeah Porsche. Exactly. The Porsche. I'm sorry, it's Porsche. Well, no, it's my Porsche. favorite is how the way Nick says Jaguar. Yeah, Jaguar. That's how the Brits say it. <laughs> That's how they say it over the pond. Like, like what I need. What I need, Tim. What I need you to imagine is jig is a uh, jigsaw saying wins after he says piranha because like it sounds like like somebody won <laughs> oh, in Mortal no, Kombat. <laughs> piranha <laughs> wins. <laughs> 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 Uh, William enters a boiler room and find a boiler room and finds another tape. You have he says you have seen the flaws in your policy, but what you have not seen is what people go through when faced with death. Uh, this is where he has to get his lawyer Debbie uh, through uh, this gauntlet of horrible, horrible stuff. Uh, in the next ninety seconds, uh, he does so, uh, but then he realizes that uh, he doesn't have the key. Uh, she gets up and and she realizes she looks at sees all these pictures of him. And the and the the incision and realizes the keys in him, but instead of just asking for it, her first thought is "fuck it, let's go for this circular saw," and uh, he said, uh, "fucking fights her off," and then she gets these massive spikes driven through her face, into her brain, and it's brutal. It really, is. Uh, <laughs> I, I do like that he has to sort of sacrifice himself on these things and burn himself yeah, so yeah, that yeah. she doesn't get burned. It's kind of a, another interesting, uh, painful choice. Uh, let's see. But that's the other the other thing too is I feel like he's not using his clothing and stuff enough to like block, try and make the steam not hit him. Yeah, but I think it, it's. Just but I guess like, it's like a time thing. You got ninety seconds. Yeah. Where, you know, where's, oh, where's steam gonna hit? I don't even know. I, you know. I don't know, Nick. I feel like giving ninety seconds get butt ass naked real quick. I would just be like, can you move your head a little bit so the spike doesn't hit? Just move <laughs> yeah. Head, you know what I mean? No, I'm but all flexible with it. You like. Know? Ugh, my know, initial like question, I, I <laughs> completely, <laughs> I had missed that animation where it launches it and out and angles. Yeah. I had missed that initially because at first I'm like, this is one of the easiest ones to get by. Like, I don't, this one makes no sense. But then when they, I had missed a little animation where it goes and it kind of juts out to then angle further into the neck. I was like, oh, damn. Okay. It's pretty was good. Was it a lever? Um, uh, like, yes. I mean, could you can you like take <laughs> out the shirt and then tie it in like a knot and then and pull, then pull it? it? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, ninety seconds though, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's all. This is the problem, right? It's like, what are you guys gonna do if there's a spike going through your head in ninety seconds? I'm freaking out. I'm yeah. Just probably yeah. Like, let it happen. And just letting it happen. Let that sweet release. Mm -hmm. uh, Pamela watches as William makes his way through the gauntlet and finds a third key to unlock himself. One more to go. Perez found traces of Freon. On the fingerprints they found, uh, was it before or did Stram bring it in with him? Uh, they're also trying to unscramble the tape to find the original voice. Why would you tell Hoffman all of this? You, like, we, it's clear at this point that they that both of these feds suspect him of and not Strom of being the killer. What is their motivation toward for any of this? Why would you not just decode this thing and then be like, hey, we we got to get you over here. And then when he walks through the door, nine fucking federal officers hey, yep. just pull their guns on this guy and go, get on the fucking ground. You were expecting him to, like, to catch a predator in? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's just like, <laughs> you know. Honestly, look, the movies are dumb, and and this is like a, just a – all these movies are like a giant bucket of Halloween candy where I'm like, I'm not going to say no to it, and I'm going to enjoy the shit out of it. But but when fed, when feds who are like the head of a department make – like do stupid shit like this, it really takes you out of it. And it's like let's take Hoffman to this weird off-site video place that wasn't even in the federal building that we work in. It was like it was like around – I don't even know where they were, but it's yeah, like – Yeah, they like outsourced people. it to yeah. some music yeah. studios. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking weird, right? So I got like, this we got new this... plug-in for Pro Tools. It like does this voice thing. Very strange. Um – and it, and then they're like, well, we actually – then Erickson turns it on him. He's like, we, we kind of know it's you, right? And then we hear his voice last minute. I'm like, what did you expect him to do? Neither of you have your gun out. Neither of you have – you don't have any backup there whatsoever. There's not even any video feeds like recording this and sending it to another office. Like you've got no fucking – if this guy starts fighting you, it's three on basically two. I don't know if the video lady can fight. She's a <laughs> video lady. Take it from me, a person who's edited video my entire life. I'm fragile. It's yeah. not happening. Right? <laughs> I just love that every turn, though, when these moments kept kind of popping up and she keeps on kind of questioning him, Hoffman's just constantly like, 
Damn, Strom is crazy. He <laughs> 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 just, just kept on saying it was so funny because she'd be like, Yeah, well, we found this and that. He'd be like, Strom, what a what a jerk. And she's like, or somebody else. He's like, nah, Strom. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, but it's I wanted strong, like bro. the thing that annoyed me the most, and and this was just one of those annoying movie moments that you get mad when you're watching somebody in horror films like tripping over their shoelaces and stuff or running upstairs with the killers chasing them it's like hold on we got i got some jets flying over it. <laughs> <laughs> what, what it reminded me of was like when those jedi dudes um got killed by palpatine when they're like kind of like all right we know we know you're palpatine and we're all jedis and we're here to get you and palpatine just slowly like stabs them they're like ah and they all die like so easily yeah. it's like that like in this sequence she shoots the fuck the lady shoots the fucking recorder lady three times in the back has more ammo you, i mean you gotta assume it's a full clip you have more than three shots and just stands there as he walks up to her to then like stab her it's like you you could keep shooting it was just one of those annoying movie things that's like such plot armor bullshit and there's totally. ways to mask it and not oh yeah have the audience be like what the fuck you could have you could have shot hopping him be like fuck you know or something but nothing happens she just kind of lets him get away it was so stupid yeah and then of course because it's not in the federal building or the building where all of the the fbi agents work because it's in an offsite building, he's like, I'll just go to my truck, get some, uh, yeah, some of the old gasoline. And then, of course, and also, um, Strom's hand, which I just keep in the back of my car. <laughs> it's fucking great, just in case, man. <laughs> just in case, I keep it in an igloo, a little igloo I got from Target. <laughs> so, a nice little I, are we not worried about the decay of that and the like smell? any it's smell like, or yeah. moisture? That smell, <laughs> if, if you were driving in that car for longer than like an hour after a few days of that thing being there, all, you would just smell like a dead arm. All of your clothes was just, one time. My not buddy a Scott, dead body, specifically a dead arm. One time, my buddy Scott <laughs> left a jug of milk in the back of his car, not open, oh. by the way. He just, he just forgot it was back there because he bought it at the Safeway. The next day, had to sell the car. Oh, it was remember, so. Remember bad. when it Kevin spilled so some fast. milk in his car, and man, those well, rides Tim did were too. Those rides <laughs> were not thing, fun. Man. But anyway, like yeah, Fredo, I was just drinking milk. <laughs> Fredo, I was dying of laughter at just like putting the hand everywhere. Like I imagine he'd be like, ah, like doing like. <laughs> <laughs> Dap him up. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Jill opens the box again and takes out envelope number six along with a walkie-talkie. I think, man, I don't know. They're not really, really not great at shooting the close-ups of these things. They they go by so fast. I'm like, wait, what the fuck is going on? Like, maybe hold on them for just a little bit longer. Uh, William comes to another room where his dog pit is chained to a merry-go-round. Two can't live, four will die. Uh, one by one, everyone gets their chest blown off except for two people. It comes down to uh, Josh and uh, Shelby. And, man, Josh is not happy when he has to take a shotgun blast to the chest. He says, your policy is bullshit. I did everything for you. You, me, uh, look at me when you're killing me. You look at me. And then Josh gets his, his, his chest blown out. Um, There's a couple things I want to talk about in this scene. Um, overall, I love it. Like, I legitimately think that like, there's a lot going for this that I was excited to see. I just, the moment I think about this as a saw trap, I think it's really stupid and not good at all. But, like, in the context of this movie and just the, from an entertainment factor, I really enjoyed this. I love that the music was, like, a carnival version of the Saw theme song, like, playing for them. Uh, and, like, that was super fun. And seeing these people turn on each other so quickly and seeing that ratchet up and them just saying anything possible to try to save themselves, I thought was like something that we'd expect to see more in this franchise and haven't. Um, and I thought that she this talks shit about scene, you all the time. She's lying. Yeah, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, and a, a funny, uh, fun fact here: the actress that said she was pregnant was actually pregnant. Oh, yeah. So that's that's weird. Do you think um, that when the this is how she announced her pregnancy. Like she got a copy of the dailies and like showed it to all of her <laughs> friends and family. <laughs> I'm pregnant. Incredible. Um, I, what I needed here though is I needed these shotguns to blast off heads. Yeah. Like. Yeah, it's not satisfying. It, I'm sorry with body shots. I, yeah. I needed the gore of just fucking like when that one lady doctor lady had her head blown off by the mm -hmm. the shotgun shells around her neck in part two mm -hmm. or three or whatever. 
th- this isn't future spoilers besides just the name of it. But I remember when they first announced that Saw 9 was going to be called Spiral from the Book of Saw. I was like, Sick. I'm a real big Saw fan. Mm-hmm. What? Spiral? Like, out of all the things, like, I, I there's a lot of iconic Saw shit, right? The pig face and the Billy the Puppet and just, like, gears, all this stuff. But I'm like, a spiral? And I, as far as I know, the first time we ever see a spiral is on this carousel. Mm, interesting. And it's like, really? Uh, well, it's his like, cheeks, isn't it? It's his yeah, cheeks. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, oh Billy's yeah. cheeks. Yeah. The cheeks. puppet's cheeks. Okay. Oh, it, it's like yeah, that's... been there the whole time, too. Yeah, it's been the whole <laughs> shit. <laughs> if I was looking closer. <laughs> we didn't even know it. Uh, Jill heads back to the game and finds everyone in their cages. She leaves a note for Hoffman on the keyboard. The same one Pamela gave to her. Brent decides to pull the lever. He's like, fuck it, I can't take this anymore. We got to figure it out, fuck it. But nothing happens. Uh, Tara thinks she knows what it does. And I'm like, how? How would you know what it does? She puts the lever back to neutral. Hoffman finds the note he left uh, f- uh, for Amanda. Uh, she, he, The note he was supposed to leave uh, was something different than the note he actually left her that night. She, he knows she was with Cecil. The night Jill was attacked, she was jonesing him for a fix, and she made Cecil go in there and therefore was responsible, in fact, for Jill's uh, uh, baby's death, Jill and John's baby's death. And therefore responsible for Jigsaw. There you go. Holy shit, man. This this I mean, con reveal is insane. I mean, <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I loved it. I, I was love like, it. that's awesome. No way. <laughs> um, and that's why he put her, he thought she was the first or second one, right? Because Cecil was the first one and then she was the second person. Oh, right? my goodness. Yeah. No. Right. I mean, yeah. No, no, right. no, no, no. no. Who was he, he did not know. Jigsaw does not know that Amanda was there. That that's day. right. No, he has to. No, why would he? No, no, no he no. doesn't. Because that's the threat that's from the Jill. Threat. That's the threat. Yeah. No, no. Hoffman, Hoffman. Hoffman's playing it. We saw this in Saw Three, where she was getting so upset, like looking at the. She read a letter. We didn't yeah, see what it, it said. It just poetically lines up that way. And she was like, "Oh fuck, fuck, fuck!" And then she goes and she like weirdly kills the nurse. It's mm-hmm. because. That, like, he said, "Go kill her." Yeah, he, he said he had that she had to, or else yeah. uh, Hoffman was going to tell Jigsaw, and she has a big, you know, crush on Jigsaw. Wow, which is like makes it's me feel a lot better about not loving those moments where I'm like, "Why is she so emotional right now?" About like this whole thing just doesn't really yeah. vibe with me. And this, I it felt, it felt weird and felt a little off. It did, yeah, but um, I, I kind of love the justification of it all. Yep, dude, it's like, did Batman make the Joker? Wow. I'm Batman. And he's like, you say you pass that shit, bro. Keep talking. How it goes. <laughs> wow. That's circular. Tim, it's like a spiral. <laughs> I thought you were going to say saw, but damn, you busted out spiral. There we go. We're trying to find more meaning in spiral. We got to keep this it. series Good. going. It's paying the bills. Uh, let's see. Jill gets the drop on Hoffman and electrocutes his chair. <laughs> it's like, it was very sure. weird. It was very, very weird. Balls. I, we got to uh, hope he sits down. <laughs> <laughs> William makes it through the gauntlet with one minute to spare. A door slides open and he sees Brent and Tara on one side and Pamela on the other side. Surprise, though! Tara isn't William's wife. She's Harold's wife. The man William denied coverage to, thus killing him. William is, in fact, dating Pamela. And it's like, I did not see that coming because you thought maybe he's like, I, I don't, maybe he has a wife and he's cheating on her wife with Pamela, or maybe he's just like, Pamela is my girl. I don't know. Either way, I guess Pamela is the family that he's never going to see again, but he sees her now. Who knows? Uh, William realizes it's not my game. And then Jill t- ties Hoff into a chair and puts the reverse bear trap on him. And I thought you had to so- I, had to, I thought you had to like drill it into someone's mouth, but she just kind of puts it in like it's a little mouthpiece. And I'm like, that's cool. It's like, you know, when you buy something on Amazon and then you go to order it again like a year later and they're like, this is the updated version. Like, that doesn't look as good. Yeah, that's not even the choice. same so brand. You, yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> you got to get it. Uh, John plays another, uh, let's, let's see, uh, th- 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 John plays another message for Tara. Kill William or spare him. Live or die, the choice is yours. Uh, at this point, she's like, oh, she shows, uh, let's see, jo- a lot of stuff's going on here. Uh, Jill ties Hoffman to the chair, puts the bear chop on him, shows him the sixth envelope that she never gave him. It's a picture of Hoffman. Why would Jill go all uh, along with any of this? Why would she be doing any of this is what I asked myself, but I guess she's it's the final process. promise, man. It is the he, final promise. He saw this in, the, in one of the other movies. Like He's like, I have one thing I need to ask you. And she's like, I'll do it. I and mean, this is her doing it. Can you Tim, you acted it in the murder out of 30 well, people? Sure. You acted it out a little too well, though, right there, Tim. <laughs> yeah, we need less yeah, emotion. Yeah. You're right. Less you're right. Feeling. Yeah. Tim, I'd like to give really you some motivation for, uh, for when you say I'll do it. And the motivation is 
you have no idea where you are. You've never taken an acting class before. You're on some sort of quaalude, thus killing all the emotions in your face. And uh, you didn't hear me say the word action. Yeah. <laughs> That's Jill, baby. Perfect. Uh, Tara wants to kill him, but she can't. And then Brent's like, I can, and then pulls the trigger, and you're like, what? Damn. You're, you just murdered a man. Guess what? You're at? Guess who's up next for the game, Brent? You see how this goes? You fucking fail one game. You wind up in the game the next time. Uh, Spikes impale William and and fill him with acid, and he burns oh. in the inside. The, Im- the yeah. impaling and then the injection of the acid is, like, overly brutal. brutal. And, and then we see the body, like, fall apart in his intestines yeah. and shit. Like, I loved it just for, like, how insane this was. But, that like, was gnarly. It was... It's so unnecessary. <laughs> like, either do the acid thing or do the spike thing. Spikes filled with acid that will then go into you and then fill you with acid. It's just like. <laughs> yeah, like de- <laughs> deteriorating from the inside out like that seems like a pretty, like, top tier way to die in terms of brutality. And Ooh. then I mean, at the end, uh, he's going to fall into a shark pit. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know if we need the two steps, just the spikes <laughs> or the acid. Yeah. I guess what, the sharks, Honestly, they have handguns. Lasers. But, like, the fact that this is at an abandoned zoo and there isn't some, like, weird last-minute animal thing yeah. is kind of disappointing. I mean, I honestly, with the whole... Piranha. Piranha. <laughs> I thought that was going to yeah. be a piranha jet thing. I thought that was going to be a trap of a tank of, pir- of piranha. That would have I mean, been cool. I guess if you squint, the acid spikes could be piranha coming from the sky. Mm, mm. I don't know. Well, he can predict the human mind. I don't he think you've ever said something piranha. stupider in your fucking life. <laughs> Piranhas from the sky? I don't write these movies, man. I just get paid to watch them. Uh, Hoffman smashes his own hand to bits to get out of the restraints. Oh, uh, brutal. And then I guess he actually didn't get to walk away untested. After all, he smashes his face through the glass and, and sandwiches the bear trap between two bars. They pop and they rip his face open, but not so much. They get caught in the window. Just enough for him to wedge and rip his own head out of them. And he screams into the skies. The camera cranes up. And that is the end. This kicks song. ass because kicks I've ass. never this cared song. much about Hoffman until that yes. moment to show me it's this dude rap. is smarter it's than rap. you really think he is. Like He's got the stuff. Dude, Hoffman's getting out of stuff, this bear Joe. trap is the coolest thing. And once he's out, his fucking face is flap is like moving in the wind. Yeah, and then <laughs> the bear trap opens up and breaks that. Go- dude, it was so awesome. The coolest part of the but- movie, I think. Do you think he, because I, when I was watching it, didn't get the in, impression that he did that on purpose. I thought he was just, like, like getting frustration out. No. And then, I, like, it I, happened to pop. I don't know. No, I think it was, I, I think that this was the movie studio telling you, like, hey, this guy's someone to worry about. Because he's, he's getting out of the bear trap. Like, nobody yeah, gets I, out I of the bear so trap. Too. I okay. think he knew the engineering of it all. It was like. This, he didn't know it was going to work, but I think he was like, this is my this only is my shot. Best shot. Yeah. This was hype as hell, man. I it's similar to it. Strom with the neck thing, you know? Oh, yeah, God. exactly. I feel like the, uh, um, the, the, the music playing during this is my favorite iteration of the Saw theme mm-hmm. thus far. Like, three had a great one, but this one just ratchets it up. Like, there's, like, choir elements going. <laughs> the drums are just going fucking nuts. And I loved seeing all the doors closing, like, for, throughout the, the franchise. But I loved it ending with him just screaming, surviving the test. Like, we haven't seen something like this before. And it was just, like, a, it, it felt really cool. And, yeah, it, like, made me care about Hoffman so much more than I ever have. Um, so, yeah, I, I thought that, like, this end made this movie, like, really Pretty damn good. Agreed. Opinion. Agreed. I liked it. And Hoffman lives to tell another tale. And then, this is the first Saw movie to have a post-credit sequence. Ooh. But was I cool? scrolled through. I was looking for it. I missed it. It's I missed only it. on certain oh. versions of it for some reason. And honestly, it's pretty inconsequential, all things considered. But it is, and it's on YouTube if people want to see it. It's like forty-five seconds, but it takes place during um, Saw three slash four where uh, Amanda is around the Saw 3 trap situation, and she goes and finds Jeff's daughter because Jeff was killed, so he never got to do his next game yeah. to go save the daughter. Yeah, yeah. So we see uh, Amanda go up and look at the, the, the girl and just be like, hey, someone's going to come save you. You cannot trust them. Like, they, they are bad. And then leaves, and then that's why we see that it's Hoffman, Hoffman. that saves the girl. Oh. oh. And there's another scene in, I think it was uh, in Saw 
it was four or five, we see Hoffman talking to Perez and he's holding one of the, the little girl's toys that we see her have this toy. So it's just a lot of like complex bullshit that they're adding together to try to like explain any like plot holes that they had and little girl stuff was kind of that. Um, but yeah, it ended up not really being consequential. Huh. Okay. I was looking for it. Um, Pirana. Pirana. So Pirana. let's get into. I don't love that in the recommendeds for that video is <laughs> apparently there's a post credit scene for Saw X. Oh shit! Yeah, don't watch that. No, yeah, I was like, I'm gonna click out of this before it auto plays. Um, now, Andy, it's time to rank the traps. I I don't. uh, The music's Uh, not gonna uh, work, uh, probably. Traps. Traps. Wait, they don't rank them like we rank them. Currently, number one, we have the rack from Saw Three. Number two, we have the needle pit, the petal knit. From Saw 2. Uh, three, we have the reverse bear trap from Saw 1. Four, we have the blood pints, a.k.a. the bloody buddy system from Ugh. Saw 5. <laughs> uh, and then five, Love we have that. the scalping chair from Saw 4. So what, what do we want to put as, like, the iconic trap from this movie? Um, I think the shotgun was... one's the most iconic, but I think the more brutal one is the way to open up the movie. I think the pound yeah. of flesh one. Yeah, I agree. I do think the carousel is the iconic one, but it's like, it'd be oh, last place awesome. here for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that's... So what were, what's the bottom of the arm. list currently? The scalping chair. I think the pound oh, of flesh the... is definitely better than that. Me too. Uh, yeah. Yes. And pound what's the one above pound? that? Is that the bloody buddies? <laughs> the bloody buddy system, which I think is better than the yeah. pound for a pound. It, de- it just depends if, if it's... Are we... <sighs> Is the list based on more like solid trap trap or like iconic because it's the I, mix. Yeah, it's kind of between the two. If anything, I feel like it's a mix between the two, but it leans more on it actually being like a brutal saw trap, no? Yeah, like I I I think like we've seen somebody chop off limbs before in mm-hmm. this movie. It's like the idea of this dude cutting off from his stomach like that is that was so visceral to me <laughs> and it's then and then the lady of element of it too yeah. of like having to play against each other and, and then the lady joey other, having to go higher saw yeah yeah oh fucked up and i get my issue with the carousel thing too is like they don't have any control over it. it's him versus at least with the pound of flesh one it's like them having to make the decisions for themselves instead of just Fighting to stay alive, or like Joey, trying Joey to sold bargain. Sold. <laughs> <laughs> sold. All right, so there we go. We're putting a pound of flesh from Saw Six uh, at the second to last, uh, yeah. underneath Blood Pints, aka the Bloody Buddy System, <laughs> yep. and above the scalping chair from Saw Four. Yeah. Now it's time to rank the reveals, Andy. It's that pivotal moment. It's unpredictable. This twist. This twist. <laughs> Unforgettable. I forgot the word. <laughs> Every week I forget that that's the song. I know. <laughs> so currently we have uh, number one is Saw 2 with the tape on playback. Amanda is Jigsaw. The kid's in the safe. Number two, we have Saw 1. He's on the floor. Mm-hmm. Saw 3 is number three. It's Amanda's game. Jeff is the husband and has another game. That's good. Saw 4. This happened at the same time as 3. And Hoffman is the second apprentice. And then Saw 5. Hoffman, uh, number five, saw five. Hoffman uh, pulled off framing strong. I think this is above Hoffman's reveal that he's an apprentice. Ooh. I think I agree. Because, like, there's something about just the the twist of this isn't, like, that apparent. It is the whole Amanda's letter that he got from Hoffman and all that, which I, I love from a lore perspective. I just don't think it's that great at, from a but this movie's twist perspective. Was that the main twist? Because there's two twists, right? The main twist is that William is not related to the, yeah, the lady, it's and not, that's not his game not the entire game. time. It's actually her game to, like, to choose whether or not he lives or dies. That, that was the big twist for me. There, I mean, I feel like it's that, but then combined with, like, it the does, big plot twist of... That it's also Hoffman's game? Yeah, and it's Hoffman's game, yeah. and that Hoffman and Joe. I mean, I'm just, I'll just make it, it, it I'll just make a... a bunch of, like, little twists around it. Yeah. I'll just make Devil's Advocate, right? That's a lot of twists. <laughs> okay. Oh, too many? 
And it's, I don't think it's too many. I'm just thinking, like, if I go, Andy, I go to the twist store, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm looking at Saw 1 through 5, and they got two twists in them. And I'm is thinking it, to myself, can we, what's is there the a bundle deal these two like twists? <laughs> and I look over and Saw 6, maybe not everyone's favorite Saw, maybe Joey's favorite, maybe not my favorite Saw. It's got seven twists my in it. Favorite. It's got seven twists. Right. For the you same might not price be three twists. hungry for that many twists that day. They're not great twists, right? You look at them, you like, the whole family, though. <laughs> Yeah, they're going to feed my whole family, but they expire expired tomorrow. they got to eat them tonight. <laughs> but my, I guess the question is, is more twists better than less twists that are be- that that taste better? You know what I mean? That, I was, yeah. The whole time I was like, where are we going? Thank you, Joey. That's <laughs> yeah. a better way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I think but you, if... you, built, you built out a whole twist mm. store, and that was fun for everyone. It was yeah. really fun. It was good <laughs> visual storytelling. Even it being not, was it William's game? Was stronger yeah. than Hoff. By the way, it was fucking William's game, which is ridiculous. But yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing is, a lot of the movies have had many twists, like two, three, four, all had, like, layers to it all, and I, I enjoyed this overall. I would put it where Alfredo's saying, so under Saw 3, over Saw 4, and 5. I'm I with would it put because it one lower. I would go one above because I think the final little uh, cherry on top is Hoffman surviving, which I yeah. did not expect. Big twist. Again, Andy. This big bag of twists right now. Yeah. You're not going to like it, but it's going to satiate you. You're going to feel full <laughs> afterward. And the one at the bottom of the twist kind of Pringles can is the most fresh. It's got the most, like, salt on it, you know, most flavor. Oh, yeah. so, wait, so just to clarify right now, me, Alfredo, and Andy are all in the same place of saying that it's under the twist store. Yeah. Over Saw 4. A little bit higher. <laughs> the I'll get, can, you, can I be honest with you guys right now? You guys know how sometimes I just think of something or do word association for a lot of my hilarious humor that of I do course, on this channel? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought twist. I thought those little twisty ties that you put around bread. Uh-huh. I thought bread oh. bag. I thought the, bre- the bag itself is sold at a store, and each one of the little things of bread is a twist. And so I thought to myself, I if thought I garlic saw, knots. It's like it's one of those things where you go like you go to the you go to the bakery, Andy, mm-hmm. and they got like they got the fresh made <laughs> garlic knots, and you go put a couple of those in the bag. They go, that's twenty dollars right there. You go, twenty dollars. I'll go get the. There's thirty of them over there I in the bag. Like, that's like, that's <laughs> day old. That's day old. That's day old. <laughs> day old bag of <laughs> that's too many twists. <laughs> Even Barrett is confused at this point. <laughs> Sorry, my my, my mic was off, and I just, I'm listening to Nick for like five minutes. It feels like, and I just so I had to say out loud, "What are we talking about?" <laughs> Thursday, Barrett, and that's the confusion you get now when all the all twists started. happen. Exactly, exactly. Wait, wait, wait. All right, so uh, again, I think me, Alfredo, and Eddie all think it's above four and five, but under three. Correct? That sounds good. Cool. Lock it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you outrank us anyway. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to clear. I didn't. I wasn't clear where Andy was. <laughs> so Andy's hold on. The, Andy's the at the twist store. Yeah, he's at the twist store. That is that when I asked where is he. He's at the twist store. I have to send Nick off on a bakery trip. <laughs> we get, now I'm thinking. Now I'm thinking. Like, what's next? Can we get a twist store T-shirt, Joey? Can we get that going on? Just because we can put up shirts fast doesn't mean that we should. <laughs> yeah. Put a comment in the comments below if you would like to buy a twist store T-shirt. How did she <laughs> die, everybody? Like, how did she fucking die right here? It's it's so stupid. He stabbed her in the gut. So annoying. He For, maybe stabbed she's not her dead. so many times. Maybe she's no, not dead. no. I'm just saying. Like, how does she not shoot? Shoot him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How does she not shoot like him, Joey? Before. Also, where are they? The, the like nobody so hears this kerfuffle happening. You Again, know? they went to a very secluded area where this mass serial killer could kill them. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Blows up I just don't understand. Like he <laughs> shoots him three <laughs> times and just stays there. My favorite is they couldn't figure out how to kill the video wow. lady. So they just had Perez shoot her. <laughs> God, oh shit! Which was not the last. Not, oh, by the way, not the first time that's happened. That happened with a harpoon in, oh, saw, yeah. in saw three or saw oh two, right? Oh, also, yeah. he just poured the gasoline so aggressively on the like head <laughs> instructor <laughs> guy. What's up with that forehead, Andy? What is Why she going showing on? us, dog? Do it again. Oh, do it again, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to, to do something with the display capture, but it revealed another webcam, which is just... <laughs> <laughs> and the look of me when he cut back and you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right, y'all. It's time to rank the Saw movies. Currently, number one. Yeah, thank you, Andy. <laughs> we have a makeshift <laughs> setup right now. Currently, the rankings are... Number one, Saw 2. Number two, Saw 1. Number three, Saw 3. Four, Saw 4. Five, Saw 5. Where are we going to put Saw 6? Ooh, this is before 4 at least for me. Above so between 3 and 4. 
I, think I would put it between four and five. Oh, I go between three and four as well. I'm going to get outvoted. I would argue that it's probably the, the last for me. I think we're starting to get a little, we're starting to out, out, uh, outstay our welcome with some of these things. Did you hear this? <laughs> <laughs> He's just in Top Gun. So then, uh, Joe, sorry, what'd you say? I would put it between four and five. Okay. Uh, so it's up to Andy. Andy, make your choice, live or die. I <laughs> <laughs> um, hope this. I hope this video gets claimed because I keep using that sound right. <laughs> I uh, this one's so tough because I think this this movie is more clever and more smartly written in terms of the message it's trying to get across and everything kind of be. It's a. It's just a tighter, better made story, but. I think like by this point, it's it's kind of like the reason why people stop Nick. It's why like you didn't watch Andor, right? Because you kind of just got burned out by mm -hmm. the end of it. And I like by this point, like I'm just I wasn't as entertained by this movie as a whole, even though the prior movies I feel are better. Fucking Jets, dude. Jesus. <laughs> That's fine. Then I'm bad. changing my vote. I'm changing my vote. I, I agree. I think that Facade 4 is better than this. I, I would put Thank it you, above Saw 5. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, th so th th it ends up going there. Alfredo says between three and four, me, Joey, and oh, uh, Andy, all between uh, four and five, and then Nick has it last. So the new rankings are Saw 2, Saw 1, Saw 3, Saw 4, Saw 6, Saw 5. Piranha. We will return next week. Honestly, this ranking <laughs> as a whole, I feel pretty good about. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we yeah. all are like... Semi aligned, Roughly, yeah. like, yeah. Well, you can you can tell that like we're all aligned, but as the movies get messier, so does our placement where we're yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So uh, next week we will return with Saw 3D, the Ooh. final chapter. Y'all are not ready for this one. Oh. I'm telling you, I can't wait. Right now, it is ugly, but Just ugly. Title alone, 3D, and uh, I bought 3D glasses for it. I haven't got them to work yet. I'm excited, but we got time. I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping I can. Get you this haven't got them to work yet. <laughs> it's a whole fucking it? thing, y'all. Tim, do you want me to bring my TV over? We'll put two TVs next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. First, uh, I want you to go by the the twist store and set things up. But, uh, I'll bring some of the twists, yeah. the garlic knots for yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate that. God, the garlic knot. Oh God, they're twisty. Is it They're because twisty. we have some in the fridge right now? We had them last week. No, Andy brought up the garlic knots. I didn't. I didn't yeah, know I we had garlic knots. Oh, so let us know in the comments below if you want some garlic knots. Uh, 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 uh. He's Jigsaw. Jigsaw, my boy with Amanda and Hoff. Hoffman. Bam, bam. <laughs> anyway, I love you all. Goodbye.